Yeah, so we would be starting with simply what do we need to communicate. Let us imagine that you are staying across some parts of the world and need to communicate with someone. It may be voice, it might be text, image, music, any form of data. So let us start with that. Now what do we need to communicate? We need a medium. The medium can be a wired medium, a air or vacuum that is wireless link, optical, water like submarine communication and of course uh, there are some special sort of communication nowadays coming up like implanted sensors and which are essentially implanted into the human body. So human body can be a uh, media and after going through human body it, the signal would be passing over the ear <coughs> then it would go through wires. So any of the combi uh, above combination can be considered as a media. Now uh, I am trying to be as basic as possible and as loose as possible. So if still there are doubts and if there would be, uh, please do not hesitate to ask. Now we, let us say that we are sending some, sending some electrical signal from one node to another node. In electrical media like in a wired media, it would be in form, form of voltage or current. In vacuum over the air, it would be in form of electromagnetic waves. In an optical media like an optical fiber or even through air, sometimes there is an optical link like uh, when you press the remote, it is essentially an optical link. So it is line of sight optical link or from remote to your TV or other things, it, the signal is light. So all of these come under the broad spectrum of electromagnetic waves. Now what decides what is the, would be the data rate and all those things. Now let us say you are communicating simple voice over the telephone. Now voice like I am speaking now has the as you should know it is it has the maximum frequency of 20 kilohertz and uh, everybody knows that right right yeah so and again all the essential frequencies that are needed to form the voice signal and essentially recognize what i am speaking comes within 4 kilohertz <coughs> so it has a frequency uh, bandwidth of 3 kilohertz i would be explaining in detail what is what a bandwidth is so any frequency till 3.3 giga 3.3 uh, kilohertz is communicated over a voice channel. So 3.3 kilohertz, <coughs> essentially it is 3 kilohertz. So what is what is done is for recognizing any voice or any speech that is signals from 300 hertz to 3.3 kilohertz is chosen, rest is stamped out damped out I mean is filtered out how you would going be going to filter out I would come later. Now then again so voice can be communicated over a 3 kilohertz signal anything uh, that comes on your mind which I can occupy a lesser bandwidth or has lesser lesser variance than uh, voice it would be very primitive type of communication anybody there are some electronics students at least yeah you can speak aloud it's not an issue so Morse code was chosen because they occupy very less bandwidth that is they have very less variation lesser is the variation lower is the bandwidth required lower is the energy required and so on and so forth so 
it all depends on how much amount of information that you need to convey. Now let us say that you need to capture a very vibrant very, uh, video like that of a sports or even like that of a movie. All of you have seen uh, movies in movie halls, those have very large screens and the details are really uh, explicit. So as it is uh, compressed into a video format, the they are essentially downsampled. Downsampled in the sense that the, they con con contain lesser details. So more details you go, there would be more amount of data. How a video is taken, let us say you choose a color at one point, see what the color consists of, all the colors are reproduced in combination of green, blue and red. So now the, green, the intensity of green, intensity of blue and intensity of red are digitized in form of intensity and then transmitted. So lesser the, inten, the lesser the number of levels you divide the intensity of blue, lesser would be the number of bits to represent them. Is that uh, clear? Like let us say you represent this as the maximum limit in which the blue is there. Now you will divide this limit into various divisions. Now you say this paper is of in the blue scale of like this. Now you could have subdivided it further. So the number of bits so this levels is essentially represented by number of bits 2 to the power n equal to number of levels. So to represent the intensity of blue of this paper would be somewhere here more precise. So essentially you are consuming more number of bits to denote this level. So combining the level of blue, red and green you would be transmitting the video signal. So we have an example of low data rate or low, uh, low informative signal which carries low information and some an example of highly informative signal which carries high number higher number of bits which requires a high number of bits to be transmitted. Okay. Now here I am communicating with you. So it is one to many or maybe if I consider to choose someone among you to communicate with it is one to one. Now here all the communication is restricted within this room. So I do not need to bother that if I am disturbing someone else outside the room. So this is can be sort of close communication where, where I am not communicating with the other world. So I do not care if I am disturbing the outside, disturbing people outside. So this there that it is a very purpose of this room to make sure that I do not disturb uh, our people outside this room and uh, people outside this room do not disturb me. So this sort of uh, communication is unrestricted like this video can can have uh, can be of any any number of bits as possible any details if they can go as soon as, as the camera permits anything it goes now when i am communicating in a shared channel shared channel in the sense let us say if of this video was to be transmitted over the uh, campus land okay now then you would have to be bothered about if you are disturbing others. Is that clear how? I do not think it is clear. So let us say uh, there are at various points of time there are uh, cricket transmissions captured by somebody and then it is shared. So that logs up, uh, logs up the campus land, it does, right. So in that way you, the, you, one of the person is occupying higher signal space or higher signal uh, higher signal capacity in that channel at the expense of others it, it then again it is restricted within our campus so people outside the campus don't bother what is happening inside and we don't bother about others so it is still permissible now if you think that that transmission could have got outside the uh, kgp land it would have been a massacre all other communications would have been clocked. 
so that cannot be uh, permitted to happen okay now, so in a worldwide net net we cannot let any single person occupy the whole resource so we have to go through certain guidelines right now those guidelines are restrict our signaling or information transfer capability such are wired lines uh, some of the uh, to some extent it would be simple ele electrical wires after that it would be optical fibers and all and op over the air now over the air the scenario is still dense like let's say a ship is communicating that i am sinking and at that same point of time somebody is saying hello to somebody else or simply transmitting music so that is even dangerous situation so that again cannot be allowed, allowed to happen so now these media and the electromagnetic waves going through them is governed by maxwell's laws, laws of electrodynamics i am sure all of you have heard of it and shannon's channel capacity theorem this you would be coming to in a later course okay shannon's, cha shannon's channel capacity theorem essentially defines what maximum amount of data that can be transmitted over a channel or what uh, what would be the bit rate over a channel considering what energy you are uh, pushing in and what is the noise in this their channel so this shannon's channel capacity theorem is a very fundamental theorem in all communication circuits or all communication any communication system that has been designed till date has to and have to conform to this channel capacity theorem now uh, i won't be going into the channel capacity theorem in this uh, lecture when you go back to your rooms please look this up it is not very hard to understand maybe it would be uh, the parameters wouldn't be very clear to you but it's still what are looking up now what would what happens now we are going into the details of bandwidth and what is exactly happening when we transmit some digital data now see a digital data is either a zero or a one so it would be So it would be just wise or very apparent that if you could transmit a zero with a lower voltage level, let's say you have a key. Now you, uh, you have a battery. Somehow you have this key and an antenna or this can be a wire also now wouldn't it be very apparent if you if you could just switch on and switch off this key or send some low voltage through this through this antenna or through this wire and a high voltage through this wire to represent 0 and 1 wouldn't it be very convenient and very apparent i would uh, appreciate some response okay so why don't we do that uh, have you all uh, i think you have all gone through fourier transform yeah so what is the frequency response of this function yeah so you see uh, yeah uh, you see right here what is the frequency response of this function now what is what does this exactly mean let's say you transmit this okay firstly as soon as you transmit this the frequencies that would be transmitted through the wire or the through the medium would be say this is zero frequency okay this is zero frequency and this is in the negative side of frequency which is imaginary but it still exists 
and this is positive frequency. So, as soon as you transmit this pulse, it occupies all the frequency spectrum to infinite infinity on both sides. So, what are the chances that, uh, no, what are the problems now? Can anybody tell me? Noise comes later. What were the more major problems? That still comes secondary. Yeah. Uh, that is still secondary. One and next one. So if it won't support the entire frequency range, yeah. so our actual magnitude of the signal won't be obtained because some right. of the past yeah, signal that is another, another second part. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so the is something mm -hmm. um, a bit more precise. If you do this, the person next to you cannot do anything else. Okay. So, firstly, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't possibly have, nobody possibly has an hardware, have an hardware which can support this frequency range. Okay. Next, if you do, even if, let's say we have an ideal hardware and we do this, uh, any other person accessing that same channel cannot transmit anything. Now, channel creation of channel firstly it is if you consider a wireless link it is obviously very uh, definite and it, it can't be expanded secondly if you consider a wired link a wired link of any type like fiber optic or cable or anything you consider it is very costly so it has to be shared so telephone goes from your house to the exchange from your house to exchange you have a dedicated connection after that you have a multiplex connection so if you send a pulse in your telephone massacre now obviously if you send this send the uh, other signal so it would be essentially a combination of things okay and uh, essentially if you see uh, expand this function in fourier series it would have According if say, uh, let's say this one, the slides please. Yeah, let's say this has a frequency of f naught. You would have frequency response in f naught, two f naught, three f naught, four f naught till infinity. Okay. So both of these scenarios are not coincidental. Now, okay, still major issue. Let's say you compress your time signal very much you know what would happen it tells us very flat spectrum all over the positive to the negative frequency and if you have enough energy you can burn out any piece of hardware so that is an electromagnetic pulse so what is the need we are still communicating aren't we so how are we doing that any wild ideas any wild ideas Band in the spectrum for each mode of spectrum. Yeah, but how do you ensure that you occupy only the dedicated band? If we can damn the rest of the. Uh, not exactly. Then modulation is there. Modulation is uh, modulation transfers your signal to that particular band. Before that, you have to do something. What is that? Filtering is there. Even before that, what? makes you makes it very firm that you occupy the, uh, your signal conforms to that filter and uh, whatever you pass through that filter is enough to transmit your information some more wild ideas very close some more closer no no you are deviating away Carrier from Satan. He is, he is close. Someone closer. No, no, what he was saying is. We generate only that frequency in which you want to yeah. communicate. So, what do you do for that? Modulate. No, no, just think. You have a frequency response. Now, you have done Fourier transforms. 
there is something called inverse Fourier transform. Okay. So let's say. Firstly, if you can manage with some sine waves, that's excellent. But you can't do that because video signals are not like that. Video signal has a continuous bandwidth of about uh, for analog video signals, it is about five megahertz or six megahertz. For digital video signals, it can be six, seven, or eight megahertz. So you have to generate sine wave components which can which conform to that exact that bandwidth. For that. The, now uh, computation is cheap, so what you do is take the inverse Fourier transform of the bandwidth band or frequency allocated to you. Okay, that way you get the time signal, or you get the approximation of the time signal. You, if you, whether you can generate it, it's a different question. There is always some uh, tolerance or some margin or something there, some approximation. But you approximately conform to the bandwidth and in the same time you have a recognizable signal over which you can communicate or transfer your information okay now we limit the bandwidth yes 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 no not sync function now what we do is i just said uh, the word approximation okay. approximation is a big tool for all the engineers so we ensure that we get our there are certain special kind of uh, waveforms or functions by which we can ensure that we get to communicate our thing and we do not disturb the world. This uh, let let, let uh, I mean please believe me about this for now as you go further on, on your studies you would get come to understand what I am saying. Okay, So let us now let us now uh, say that we have a frequency band. If we take inverse Fourier transform, we sure would get an infinite uh, time sequence signal, and we are approximating it for till certain time only. Okay, that. This could be useful if we have a sync function because the amplitude is concentrated in a particular band. Yeah. If we have a nearly uniform frequency distribution, then we cannot actually get the time signal back. So uh, I couldn't get to. In a sync function, yes. amplitude, the major, major lobe, amplitude is the major lobe is in the, in the band. So we can actually approximate for a time signal. Yes. But if we have a nearly uh, uh, uniform frequency distribution, it doesn't have a new. Uh, uh, I still missed your point. Uh, say again. The sync function. Sync function in which domain? Sync, sync function in time domain make a particular bandwidth. Yes, so make a particular in the frequency domain. Say we have a sync function. Yes. So our maximum amplitudes are restricted in a particular bandwidth. Maximum of the amplitude. The maximum power is restricted in a particular bandwidth. Yes. If we take inverse, we can approximately get the time. time uh, yes. Signal. But if the frequency domain is nearly uniform, it is not nearly uniform. uniform. Uh, that's where the low pass filter or filtering comes around. It is something in this domain. There is a this or this something we don't bother. But it has a particular roll off, and after this roll off no further frequency is allowed to pass through that filter. So correspondingly with this roll of factor we get to have our breathing space. If this roll off would not have been there we could not we could never have constructed the time signal this roll off is essential. If it had it been this obviously the corresponding time domain signal would have been. Uh, Sync function. So this roll off is very very crucial. Now, one example of this is raised cosine filtering. Please go and uh, I think it would be go out going out of the margin so please look up this you would get to see what I am talking of this raised cosine filter and root raised cosine filter both are integrated in MATLAB and they have enough number of references in the web. So raised cosine and root raised cosine pulses okay. So raised cosine and root, root raised cosine pulses as one example gives us a frequency limited baseband signal. Now 
I am saying a new word baseband signal. Now baseband signal is what every person needs to communicate. Like my voice now is the baseband signal, that video is the baseband signal. Video communicated over as a text, video or data more uh, accurately data communicated from your computer to the switch on your floor is the baseband signal. The switch, uh, okay we would be coming to modulation uh, sooner. So let us say for now the switch ensures that your baseband signal occupies a particular carrier frequency. Now let us move on to the carrier frequency and things. Now uh, I was going to assume that you know amplitude modulation, anybody does not know? Please you do not know. Okay. Uh, so phase frequency modulation does not come into play at all. Let us now say, let us imagine a sine wave, simple sine wave. Now I would go uh, step on further saying that and uh, I think uh, I would, I am taking my time to explain things to you. If somebody feels that I am taking too much time, please go on, I mean please let me know. I do not want anybody to sleep off or think that it is too irrelevant. So uh, the EM waves are at the end of the all complexities and methodologies comes to a sine wave or a cosine wave. So when it is over a channel, any channel, say it be a wired link or an optical link or a wireless link, it is essentially a sine wave. Now as you should know a sine wave is depicted by any of these unknown no right so now what freedom or uh, degree of freedom we have in this sine wave to play with. Yeah, uh, yeah, you did not know, so you should be telling me. So, what degree of freedom in this expression we have to play with? A. Then? Omega and phi. So, each of these things can be played with. And let us say A1 or in uh, analog communication, this is simply AT, AT where AT is a uh, or in some other case A T equal to F say F1 T. So in analog communication, this would be a continuous function and in digital communication, AT would be A1, A2, A3, A4 like this. And with omega and phi, we do not differentiate much. There is obviously uh, phase modulation and frequency modulation, but broadly they are termed, this whole thing comes out to be an angle. So that is an angle modulation, right. So this whole thing after multiplication with t and adding phi is an angle. So it would be an angle modulation. So in this whole thing we modulate as an angle. <coughs> so if Uh, yeah, I hope uh, you do not have any problems following the sheets. Yeah. So if we represent this as a vector where this is A, I think I messed this up. Okay, let us say these lines represent the vector and this angle over here would represent the phase. So we can place our vector 
in terms of amplitude and angle anywhere in this space right so it can be something like this it can be something like this it can be something like this right any problem with that so we would be essentially have phi 1 let's say this is phi 2 this to be it's phi 2 is not very clear you can imagine it that this should be a 1 this be a 2 similarly if you take 90 degree plus phi 1 90 degree plus phi 2 and 270 degree plus phi 1 270 degree plus phi 2 etc we can create levels here 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 right so what stops of stops and we could use this whole space from uh, using this whole space we could create a very efficient mode of communication let's say at any point of time we can recognize at which angle this vector is and which amplitude this vector is let us say ideal case we could have recognized infinite number of points in this in this space so let's say this is a space simply a space so we could have recognized infinite number of points here which could have correspond to say infinite number of bits let's say this one this very, very particular point here resembles some number of bits or be a symbol so what stops us from there any ideas guy that why is sleeping okay it's okay no yeah, problem so what stops us from there i uh, is it a bit interesting or we should move on to some faster topic i mean it's up to you first then why uh, what in what exactly in hardware does it does would it constraint why can't we have an infinite number of bits that's the question we can't have infinite number of bits you know i know why can't we have it storage and everything comes later let's say we have a space where we can over which we can recognize infinite number of bits our movies our pictures could have been transmitted in fraction of a second so why can't we have that forget about processing anybody let's say something disturbs this from the next bit what would you call it something totally abrupt yeah so it is the noise thing that doesn't allow this to happen now where does noise come from each and every piece of hardware made of real things like metals semiconductors and uh, basically uh, metals and semiconductors all the electrical things are made of metals and semiconductors and some optical metal optical materials any material thing has a randomness in their molecular uh, molecular lattice, lattice so that randomness leads to or results in an abrupt behavior at some point of time so that abrupt behavior would be resulting in change in this phase and this amplitude so if we have these points very close together we wouldn't be able to really make out which symbol or which is has been we have received so it won't have any meaning if this if we say that we have transmitted this and sim symbols or some vectors from here also abruptly comes into this point so it would be a total misinterpretation it wouldn't have any meaning so it is noise that limits us from doing this so what do we do we construct a space of points so that this let's say anything in this boundary 
coming into in this boundary we would, would be considered as this symbol okay. Now this symbol has this space, how are this space, space, this space defined? We take into consideration all the abruptness that comes from transmitting end to receiving end. We take into consideration all that. So the sum of those abruptness taken together still would not be able to move this point to this point. That is how we construct this vector. So that is what does not allow us to use this full space. Okay. Now this and we ensure that whatever we get uh, uh, this still there might be errors very abrupt errors which would make this to this I mean point this point uh, make this point to move to this point there are other ways of correction to it. So uh, are we clear on amplitude modulation and phase modulation? This is uh, we are changing in amplitude modulation we are changing the amplitude this amplitude to this amplitude or this amplitude or this amplitude. In phase modulation we are rotating this vector to here or here or here any other space all over this circle and we are rotating it in such a manner that it is very verily recognizable. Now many of you are yawning. So let us see a very basic of this constellation. Now let us say we have in our stream of data 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 stream of this. We take two of now in this first scheme here, we have identified four phases and the amplitude level is constant. So it is a circle which has four phases. Is it clear? Okay. So this way four symbols can give us this constellation. We are representing two bits at by one symbol. This way, achha, what is the what is the uh, what should we say? What is the useful of the, of the usefulness of this? Let's say we would have if we had taken amplitude modulation only and represented 0 by one level of amplitude, 1 by other level of amplitude. So we would have been restricted to this and this, this and this or even this and this. So that if we keep the amplitude same, this is binary phase modulation, this is binary amplitude modulation, right? We are representing 1, 0 and 1, 1. By doing this, we are having representing, we are transmitting once with particular and uh, particular amplitude and particular phase and transmitting 2 bits. Now let us say we have another constellation. This is a good quality signal, might be this is what is transmitted. Let us say we have some amount of abruptness this would be confirming to this one, there would be noise and let us say we have interference in it so that it actually shifts so that is this we would get this sort of receive this sort of things. Now amplifier compression, compression we would come later, the time, can anybody tell me the time, 11.50, so 40 minutes more, okay. So amplitude compression and non-synchronous clock, okay, we would come later and IQ imbalance, the lower three house we would come later. Now let us say we have a still good better hardware good channel, we can represent 6 bits in one go. We are disturbing the channel very less, we are taking 6 bits as a, ch as a chunk, transmitting that at 
them, them at once with one on sim symbol only. So, incidentally this is called 64 QAM, this is 4 PSK and this is something like uh, uh, this is would be 16 QAM. This is quadrature amplitude modulation, this is all these things sure. Just look into uh, look. In, uh, I have not, uh, it would disturb the presentation, I would write it out. Oh, oh no, I think it would be better to write here. Okay, this is written QPSK signal. This one is 16 quam, quadrature quam would go quadrature. Um, this is sixty four sixty four because it has sixteen points in each uh, quadrant. So total sixty four number of points. So sixteen vectors in each quadrant. So total sixty four vectors in all. So this system recognize 64 vectors. How, how do we recognize it? I am coming right now. So 64 quadrature amplitude modulation. Now let us say we want to detect a particular incoming which has a particular A and a particular phi. For A, we can directly compare our standard A, standard amplitude and say that this is might be this point on this point. We can directly do that compare to amplitudes, right. Let us say compare to voltages. We can directly do that. About phase, what do we do? Any idea, anybody? We have to recognize phase. Phase is cos omega t plus phi x or phi n. What do we do? It is very, very simple components. Some uh, a multiplication of some sort which would give a phi. Let us multiply with cos omega. What would happen? So we would be separating out cos phi, right? So that way we straight away know what would what phi it is and what a it is. Okay. So this is the method of detection. This is called corrective detector. If we had a simple amplitude modulation, we would not have needed the correlative detector. We could have done with a simple asynchronous detector. Now asynchronous versus synchronous. Synchronous is we con at the receiver, we generate this cos phi or oh sorry, we generate this cos omega t in pure form without any phase difference. But in asynchronous detector, like who cares if it is in what phase the incoming signal is. Uh, I think I am not very clear, is it clear? I mean in very ground level it should be clear, details you would be learning in communication courses. Just see that uh, it is clear, I mean it is somewhat making some sense, that is what I need to do because it is a just huge topic. I want, I want to paint a picture to you what is or what all is going on, why are this VLSI is needed, why communication circuits, why RF circuits are needed, that is what I wanted to do, why ADCs are needed. So, is it making sense, any sense? So, okay. So, that is what my idea is, nothing more. So, if we are varying the amplitude only, why do we care about the phase? We do not care. We just take the amplitude, compare with another standard amplitude and say that, okay, this thing was transmitted, the A was here, the A was here, that is all. So, that is a point of asynchronous detection. In synchronous detection, we care about phase we somehow generate 
this pure cos omega t without any phase delayed form and multiply it with the incoming signal correlate it. Now correlation is something funny. Let us say some people are coming out of an railway station or an airport. Now let us see and you have seen that some people stand there with boards. So they know at least somewhat what they what it would be or even better somebody recognizes the person coming out of that airport or airplane uh, airport or uh, railway station. So as soon as he sees that person he can correlate yes I have seen this page before this is the person I am looking for that is called correlation right. You would have uh, some sense of signal ready with you you would compare it with the incoming and know that yes this is this is my this is the signal i am looking for this is what i want so that 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 is simply correlation in plain english there are various levels of uh, computing correlation there are there is analog method there is digital method but this is the basic yeah so in this after zero we generated a cos omega yes how can we be sure that it will be at a 5 phase resistance because we do not know the mother signal because the mother signal yeah. has a 5 phase resistance with the incoming signal. Right. So how do we know the mother signal? Yes, for that I would be coming later. There is a preamble to each before each communication which that preamble makes the receiver synchronous. After that preamble we get to transfer, transmit the actual signal. There is always a preamble, those are called wrappers. Like uh, in uh, you must have heard in LANs data packets have you heard of data packets the data packets these, these uh, when you open the network uh, configuration window there is certain amount of data packets received certain amount of data packets trans transferred. So up till now you have considered it to be just packets of some sort as a figure of merit or some sort of amount of thing something it shows that something is going something is coming now what makes that packet in that packet uh, let me uh, just wait for some time and we will be coming to it. Yeah this is the very next slide now in the application algorithms for encryption and signature you have your text email, picture, music, video, any damn thing that is problem of your Firefox, real player, even uh, gtalk ok. So that makes the particular data packet that needs to be sent, Skype that makes the raw data packet after that it goes to the communication device that is your LAN card. Now first it goes to the operating system, operating system communicates with the LAN card, the operating system generates the wrapper ok, wrapper or data packet it is generated by the operating system itself. Now what does the data packet essentially should contain? It should have some amount of information that if uh, have you ever come across cyclic redundancy error? Some of you have come across. So cyclic read, uh, okay, I would go. Uh, I would tell you what it is. Cyclic redundancy error is they add all the bits, all uh, add in the same digital senses, zor all the bits, and they say the final bit is one or zero. Okay, now if the final bit is one or zero they get to uh, and they transmit that final bit somehow it at the receiver they see first zoring all the bits again received bits again if it is coming to that same thing if that is the very primary of error detection codes. So it is first check because it is a very serial thing data comes in serially so it is very easy to zor incoming serial data. So as soon as they receive it and receive the cyclic redundancy error bit they know if in the very basic level if the data that, have, that has been received is correct or not ok. So that is first thing so, so there would be a cyclic redundancy, redundancy check bit then there would be other 
developed algorithms to check that if the data that has come is in proper form or it, it, has, it contains any data, it contains any error. So that is error correction, error detection and error correction thing. Some in, at, in some, th uh, some form of communication there are ways to recover some bits of error that in the packet. So that is error correction. So anybody still feeling sleepy? I mean still it's, it would be my incompetence. I am trying to relate with the real world as much as I can, not anything vague. So that is error detection and error correction. Now there would be some as he correctly pointed out some synchronizing bits. It has to be synchronous the transmitter and the receiver has, has to be synchronous. So some synchronizing bits. So all these things and some other things also maybe some encryption that it must, must not be tapped by somebody listening to the line. So some encryption would be there. Uh, upon receiving that encryption code only uh, then that data can be decoded. So that might be there. So all these things together make up the application level packet. Then after that it is broken down into single, single level packets. After that it is then uh, even or in during all these things it is still zeros and ones. So this wrapping everything happens in sort of number of bits, uh, bits level. Let us say a packet would contain 1 kilobyte of strings, 1 kilobyte of zeros and ones. So everything would be within 1 kilobyte or 10 kilobytes, who cares. So 10 kilobytes, 1 kilobytes, anything something like that. This 10 kilobytes of serial data would be mapped into that constellation this constellation we would be taking into taking a 10 kilobyte of serial data taking 6 of each bit map into this constellation and then send this symbol now this what is this symbol this symbol is not just a simple uh, cosmic cosmic plus pi this has to represent the shaped pulse because unless you transmit the shaped pulse it clogs the band so it has to be shaped pulse. Now after this shaped pulse has been synthesized, we transmit, transform this digital signal to analog signal. So here we would be having a, a, a summation of sine waves. This would be exactly what I am trying, what I was telling all the time is this, this frequency band is essentially summation of sign of this frequency, this frequency, this frequency, this frequency, all these frequencies with proper amplitude level. Now we are ready to transmit it over the channel. Now what do we mean by transmit it over the channel? You have, you have uh, radio going on, very primitive form of entertainment. You have TV going on. You have cell phones going on, you have wireless LANs going on and some other wireless LANs have uh, different uh, frequencies like A, B, G, okay, everything is going on. Now what they do is they communicate at a part, each of the protocols communicate at particular frequency like radio has, AM radio has 10 kilohertz, 44 kilohertz, etc, etc, say up to 10 megahertz all this band would be AM radio, FM radio 90 to 108 megahertz. Then the TV signal, it is about 70 to I think 70 megahertz to somewhat like uh, nine, 900 megahertz, something like that, I am not very sure. So what do we essentially do? Now, this 70 megahertz to 900 megahertz, this is a range of frequency, right? Now, what do we essentially do? Let us say the baseband signal has a bandwidth. Uh, up till now, is it clear what a bandwidth is? A very basic idea what a bandwidth is. It is the range of frequency taken up power by our very basic data signal, okay? Now, let us say that the very basic data signal has a 5 megahertz bandwidth. Now this 70 megahertz to 900 megahertz range would be broken up into channels of 5 megahertz. Now 
let's see doordarshan would have channels at 60 megahertz 67 megahertz 100 megahertz okay star tv would have channels at 200 megahertz 120 megahertz something like that so for allowing them or getting permission to transmit at that frequency of in this country they get to pay the telecom regular regulatory authority of india certain amount of license fee it needs a license fee so at by paying the license fee they get the license to transmit over that band nobody else would be transmitting over that band with the exact same signal different signal is different scenario but for tv signals or video signals or for uh, fm signals only that person or that authority or that company would uh, be allowed to transmit any other company doing that would be penalized so what do we do now what do you mean by up conversion any idea anybody any wild idea well how do we up convert things how how any any damn idea we did a few slides back we did a multiplication of two co cosine waves yeah so let's say we want to up convert a signal to 560 mega megahertz we want to up convert a baseband dc to 5 megahertz signal to 560 megahertz so that this signal occupies Uh, now occupies a space of 560 to 565 megahertz we just do a multiplication multiply a signal of frequency cons 560 megahertz excuse me with so this is a tone this is just a sine wave okay and we multiply it with this whole band of sine waves this is whole band of sine waves as we remember it so we multiply this whole band of sine waves with this single tone it can be done simultaneously and up convert it so that is a whole was about up conversion now as we up convert it what is the resultant of this then minus or plus i am depending on you hmm it's your it's your baby i don't know so as we do this what we see we have two band of frequencies instead of one which is not permissible we have to have a single band because because as soon as we have two bands we are putting on someone else's space okay which is not permitted firstly secondly we are clogging up the bandwidth that is not permitted so we need to have this single thing this is called single side band look this up okay now uh, look this up gradually first look up amplitude modulation i mean this would uh, all of this looking up would take about 2 hours so Uh, in the holiday season 2 hours is permissible no sir it's your choice amplitude modulation then look up double let me put it this way double side band full carrier this would look like something like this 
we would have the carrier present as well as both the side bands okay now double side band suppressed carrier this is not there I am sorry this one and this one okay then comes single side band now this is the evolution in history previously when we did not have the technology we used to uh, go for double side band full carrier we did not care of the bandwidth we did not care of the spectrum then when uh, things bit improved we went for double side band suppressed carrier then when things still improved single side band. Now there are many ways to synthesize single side band, it is bit mathematical and bit boring. So RF reception, now let us say we have done that, now what we do now is that the receiver, we uh, receive it through antenna, down convert the frequency, analog to digital, constellation unmapping, extract the number of bits, remove wrappers, yeah. It is not so, data packet this comes later to the data packet, data packet has been done, let us say we have 1024 bits or 2048 bits of data packet, we take up and data packet is essentially serial, let us say we have a line coming through and a series of zeros and ones coming from it okay that would represent the data packet in between data packet there would be some time space okay now this time space gives us or it, it is the, the time space or things are different for different mode of communication now this stream of data the hardware would pick up this six bits serially map it to this point depending on the pattern if it is 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, it would map it to this point so if you just convert it into bits and you see a constellation of 2 to the power 1300 into 102 bits it's clearly impossible so how how this constellation come into picture in actual data packet which consists of 1300 bytes 1300 bytes okay 1300 into 8 bits okay yeah. now 1300 into 8 bits in your hard disk or in your memory it is stored at one place when you are communicating this 1300 into 8 bits coming into to you or coming to the hardware in a serial manner so as the serial thing comes in you you count 0 1 1 0 0 1 immediately you get to choose which symbol here would be okay so that is your mapping in the demapping that's a very good question here by the way thanks so in the demapping you see which phase it is and which amplitude it is immediately you say that I have received this pattern 10010 or 1 whatever so essentially with each symbol you get 6 bits of serial data those serial data are is again goes to the line gets to some sort of serial to parallel converter or some storage element completes the whole packet gives this thing give the whole packet to the next level Everybody uh, got the sense of what has been talked about? Okay. Now, what is the trade offs? Trade off between amount of data to be sent and cost to send it. Now, if I had the money, I would have occupied 50 GB of space from 0 hertz to 50 gigahertz and would have 
transmitted whole, whole lot of things I wanted to transmit like if I had a bandwidth of 0 hertz to 50 gigahertz I would have transmitted a Blu-ray disc in one second but that is not so I get to spend millions of dollars or millions of rupees crores of rupees to get so that sort of thing I would not get it anyway. So I have some megahertz of frequency spectrum allocated to me by the regulatory authority FCC in US try in India. Now hardware, hardware we had not talked of hardware at all till now. Hardware is very costly and it is very difficult to build and power. Now if you do want to go for that sort of communication, now uh, you have been through some sort of uh, digital thing, some digital, anyway in digital or even in analog higher the frequency is it takes higher amount of power to charge the caps or go through the resistances so the higher is the power. Now as you increase the frequency rate or data rate what happens you get to consume more power and in your cell phone the or any mobile device or any damn device so you have you get to transmit a fixed amount of power beyond that you cannot have it. So spectrum allocation hardware and power consists of the cost. Now what is the hardware so what is the time now? Hmm? 10 minutes to go. Uh, can you give me 20 minutes? I mean 10 minutes more? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. <laughs> so let us go, go through this quickly. So, antenna and matching network. <clears throat> so, uh, your window to outside world is antenna. You trust. <laughs> so, the hardware is window to the outside world or wireless communication the window of your cell phone to outside world is the cell phone's antenna you have to agree with me right we in that <laughs> now there is a transmit receive switch you share the antenna with your transmitter and the receiver the re transmit receive switch ensures that first it transmits then it receives there is a switch now there there is a transmitter part there is a receiver part in the transmitter part signal processor is a common one here we have a signal processor, then we have a digital to analog converter, we filter it, up convert it, amplify it and then transmit in the receiver. There is something called a low noise amplifier, uh, if you are interested look it up, then down converter, filter, ADC, ADC is a simple analog to digital converter and signal processor. So this is the whole chain. Now uh, I have 10 minutes and 6 topics to address now differential topology now what would let us say you need to transmit a voltage what would you do you take a reference which is called ground you know what ground is it is a universal absorber and supplier of charge it can be taken as a reference also you send some voltage in reference to your ground so what problem is there problem is you have to connect this ground to all your set of hardwares which is problematic in the first sense and whatever problem see this in this real world the ground is not really ground it contains noise it contains contaminated signals from other uh, modules so ground is not really ground you cannot assume it to be a ground so it is problematic to have single ground for all your hardware so what do we do we do is we take send two signals which is plus plus delta v and minus delta v this is called differential mode of transmitting signals what do we gain in this sense let us say this line and this line is contaminated by the same amount of noise so the actual signal going into that amplifier or whatever stuff would be a difference of these two voltages so the common mode things common mode noise common mode contaminating voltage gets cancelled out this is differential topology look this up this is important noise now noise can be <laughs> this is important in the sense this is interesting you would be coming into knowing all those things about things so this is a forewarning noise there are several sorts of noise arising from primarily different lattice motions that is dependent on temperature so these are uh, there are white 
you would get to know that in advanced courses there are white noise, Johnson noise, colored noise, those are frequency, some are frequency dependent, some are frequency independent. Now single sideband you know already that you get to transmit the phase band only, nothing else, matching networks, A to D converters, these are, uh, okay let us concentrate on matching networks and amplifiers. Uh, some of you have studied amplifiers, all of you, yeah. So uh, what is an amplifier? This is not a wild guess, somebody has to answer. A bit more details, what defines gain, what defines anything, a bit more elaborate. It is a voltage gain, so how do you get that voltage gain? What, what so let us first take an well, what is how many sorts of amplifiers are there? There is a voltage amplifier, there is a current amplifier, there is a transcontinuous amplifier, transconductance amplifier. So, let us take up with the simple voltage amplifier. How do you get to amplify the voltage? Active device, what? What in the active device amplifies your voltage? Transistors. So, if you uh, go in, uh, put in some voltage in the transistors, what gets changed? Let us say you have a simple BJT, if you push in some current or let us say voltage in the gate, what what characteristic changes here? Current. So, this is a BJT or any transistor is essentially a transconductance amplifier. If you change the voltage at the input, it changes the current through the amplifier irrespective of what is important is irrespective of the voltage here, the current gets changed. Now as you put in a load here Z, this depending on the variation of current and the load here, you get a voltage. So higher you value, you value the current irrespective of in the ideal case, irrespective of this voltage here, the volt there is a change in voltage. The current through this and the transistor does not depend on the voltage. So this is the ideal case. Now what do are we assuming here? What are we assuming here? Linear operation. Next. Next. What I was I was stressing something here, irrespective of this voltage. But output voltage dependence is here. This this amplifier has a finite output impedance. Okay. Then next. We assume that any amount of current voltage swing we give here, we would get that corresponding current swing, no clipping, it gets clipped, it gets compressed, after some point of time the gain is no longer linear, okay. Now here, what disaster would happen if ZL, let us say ZL is 10 kilo ohm and let us say this impedance is immaterial, like right now let us say this impedance is immaterial, what would happen if, now uh, uh, first be clear that an uh, amplifier does not drive this load, this load is defining the amplification factor, it drives a separate outside load, okay. So what ha would happen if this is a 50 ohm load, what would happen? You would not get any or very less voltage amplification. Now in RF world or high frequency world, it is imperative for certain reasons to make the all the impedances of channels, sorry, cables and antennas to be either 75 ohm, 100 ohm or 50 ohm so that they communicate or they match into or lock into the other things effectively. That is a standard process. Now for that you need a matching network which can match the output impedance of this amplifier to the input impedance or the load impedance that is called a matching network. Now the matching network for, for uh, job, the matching network's job is to ma transfer maximum power from the amplifier to the load, okay. Now just quickly let us say we have a resistance here, okay. Let us say it be 50 ohm or 100 ohm do this in your leisure or you might not know do this if you do not want to do this, you put a cap here and an inductance here, see what happens and let us say this cap and inductance resonates at say 10 megahertz, 
just see what happens. What impedance do you see from here at 10 megahertz? Just see. Now, similarly, power amplifiers, power amplifiers, uh, oh, okay, uh, amplifiers is something like, uh, and there is a fifth kind of amplifier called power amplifier. Why is it called a power amplifier? Because it takes in some power, gives out some power it, at cost of the DC energy consumption. Now, power amplifiers are necessary, necessary because in all the amplifiers that you have to come across till now, it is either voltage or current input, but here power input because both voltage and current are essentially give, uh, varying. In uh, this case, current is very, very small even in MOSFETs or transistors, uh, MOS field effect transistors, very little current goes in. Almost at the, uh, if in very low frequency, almost no current go goes in. But in power amplifiers, both current and voltage goes in. So it is a product of vo voltage and current, output is also product of voltage and current. So it is called a power amplifier. Now power converters, we have been neglecting something all through the things. Power converters are, so I think this is last, yeah, uh, if I am within time limit, okay. So power converters, we have AD converters, up converters, a baseband, signal processing, everything needs power, okay. Now you have a battery. It might happen that you need separate power supplies for each of your individual units or blocks. Who is going to supply that? Who is going to ensure that whatever current that is needed is properly produced? If that current does not go in, your system does not work. So that is where power converters come in. Power converters are also needed in processors, in motherboards, everywhere. So I would uh, now. Let us go for a division of labor here as, as uh, we have come in. It is quite a large system to deal with. Now, electrical guys could go for power converters and A to D converters. Electronics guys could go for communication and up converter RF, con RF, RF units. And com com computer science guys could go for algorithms for the communication things. Error correction, wrappers, networks. So it, it is a cool division division of labor without stepping into each other's foot. So yeah, pardon me. You can speak out. Anyway, so uh, I have given you some basic uh, references. Nothing hi-fi. We have excellent video lectures at our website regarding all sorts of things. And uh, you can look up Berkeley, uh, Berkeley edu. they have their own courses, I am sure you know of them. Uh, and some communication book, books, yeah, progress. that is the hardest and try and go for it at, in the last period, uh, after going to the first two. There are loads of communication, easier communication books, but these are classical ones. Uh, digital signal processing. Go for the first one first. That's a, that is a sequence. And KK party that essentially maps communication, uh, sorry, signal processing algorithms to straight away to hardware, right? You have all the signal processing algorithms had to have to be matched to digital hardware. So KK party's book, I don't uh, remember the names offhand. I am sure you would get it in in the web once you give in the names. This uh, slide thing would would be available so you do not need to scram it. So uh, all these things and this is analog circuit. This Van Valbecken and books I am sure everybody has heard of. Both the analysis and the synthesis. If you want to do anything in the circuits or electrical domain, read between the lines. There is a book by Bezal Razavi on analog electronics. You can uh, take it up later and Alan Holberg. Digital circuits, Shagyan and Waste, Kang, Leguluechi, sorry, oh yeah, and RF and micro, these things comes later. Let us, uh, I mean, if you want, you can concentrate on this, this and the, this first thing. Thank you for bearing with me. <laughs>